This is lesson one, properties of matter from the investigating chemistry unit. And this will be the introduction to your unit on chemistry. The first thing you want to do is discuss with students what chemistry is and work on that definition. That it's basically the science of stuff and that you will be talking about matter a lot during this unit. And you'll also be talking about how it changes. The first thing you're going to do is review the three states of matter that students are already familiar with. Have them share to activate their prior knowledge and talk about solids, liquids, and gases and what they know about all three. Then you're going to start today with doing some observations. The students will start with their black construction paper and have them put a little bit of the baking soda on the construction paper and have them make observations about what they see. Talk to them about using their senses in observations, not just sight, but use touch. Um, talk how they can safely use smell by holding it off to the side and then kind of brushing the air toward themselves, not to actually inhale right over it. And then you'll want to remind them while taste is an important sense, it is not one that we ever use during science. So after they've had a chance to make some observations, make sure they record those observations in their student workbook, again incorporating the writing into our science lessons, and then share out with the class some of the different observations that they've made. Encourage them as they're using it over the paper that they can use their hand lenses to identify individual grains, just making as many different observations as possible. When you're making the observations, you want to talk about the difference between observations and inferences. Make sure they're using very precise language in their observations and that they're not comparing it to something else using like, that would be more of an inference. So if they described it as the baking soda has very small white pieces, that would be an observation. If they said it looks like salt, or it looks kind of like powdered sugar. Those are going to be inferences because that relies on the person hearing the observation to have knowledge of the other item they're talking about. And talking about that in science, we really wanna make sure we are doing good observations that don't require our audience to have knowledge of something else. If possible, be very precise with your observations, including things like measurements. That brings in the mathematical practices and common core state standards into your science lessons in that being very precise using measurements, things like that. After students have had a chance to observe the baking soda, now they're going to make some observations with the vinegar. You're not gonna tell them immediately that it's vinegar. Just remember to put the plastic over the construction paper and then have them make their observations of the vinegar. Again, you can talk about how they can smell it safely off to the side. A lot of students will probably at that point be able to identify it as vinegar. Um, have them look at the color and the absence of color is absolutely an observation. It doesn't have to have a color you can quantify in order to to be a good observation. Something not being there is an important observation as well. Um, have them put it onto the piece of plastic and then have them compare what was different between the liquid and the solid. In the solid they could get an individual grain. In the liquid they can't really get that individual piece. Have them compare and contrast these observations as they are making them. Once you've observed liquids and solids, ask students if they can recall what the other state of matter you all have talked about is, and that's going to be gas. You're going to do a demonstration for them to make observations about gas. And for that, you're going to need some baking soda and some vinegar. And so you'll talk about that you have a liquid, you have a solid, and talk about the difference of what they're doing inside of the jars. The liquid is taking the shape, the shape of the jar. The solid is not. It's retaining its own shape. The next thing you're going to do in order to create the gas is you're going to pour your vinegar into your baking soda. And with lots of oohs and ahs, they will see the reaction and talk about how what's in all of these bubbles and what's in here now. Well, now there's gas in here. 
And what type of gas is that? Is that the same as air or not? One way you can check and you can show students that even with gas we can make some observations even though we can't really see it. We're going to see if what's in here is the same as regular air or not. So you're going to light a candle. And then you're going to pour the gas from the jar over the candle. You want to pour carefully because you don't want the liquid to come out. You just want to do this with the gas. You don't need to get it that close, not as close as if you were pouring the liquid. And then what you'll see is that the gas from the jar extinguished the flame from the candle. Talk with students about what you saw happen in this experiment. That the gas that was in here extinguished the flame. That's the observation because that's something you could see happening. Then talk about interpretations. Interpretations are what you can determine because of what you observed. So one thing we can interpret is that the gas in here was not air because regular room air would not put out the flame. If students know that oxygen is needed in order for the flame to burn, then students could make the interpretation that the gas that was being poured on there did not have any oxygen in it because the flame could not continue burning. So you're going to spend a few minutes talking about observations and interpretations and then have students go back into their workbook over the work that they've done with this lesson so far and make sure that their observations are good observations and not inferences and also make sure that any interpretations they can make based on those observations they have made those as well. If you are doing this lesson in two parts this is the end of the first part so you can either continue with the lesson for today or save the second part of the lesson for your next science day. This is the second part of lesson one. Again, it can be done on the same day or it can be done during your next science lesson. Um, the things you have students do today, they will need to save for the next lesson in the unit. So please make sure that there is adequate storage space for them to, st for them to store the lids that they will have completed at the end of this lesson. Okay, today you're going to talk about first atoms and molecules and the idea that everything is made up of atoms and that most of the time those atoms come together to form molecules. And you really want to impress upon students just how small atoms are since it's not something they can visibly see this is pretty abstract and maybe a little difficult at first. You're going to start by giving students a strip of paper and some scissors and let them know that in order to get an idea of how small atoms are, they're going to take that paper and they're going to cut it as small as they can. And they need to keep track of how many cuts they're making. So they'll start by cutting it in half, then take one of those halves, cut that in half, take one of those pieces, cut that in half, and so on and so forth, until it's too small and they cannot cut it anymore. And then ask them how many times were they able to cut it before it got too small and they couldn't cut it anymore. Generally that'll be somewhere around seven cuts. Next you have the poster about the size of the atom with a lot of different pictures to kind of help students see with each cut about what size that is and compare that to something for them. And you'll see through this poster and as you're talking that it would actually take 32 cuts on that piece of paper before they could get to something the size of an atom. So as small as that last piece looked to them where they couldn't cut it anymore, that wasn't even close to the size of an atom. So again, they can't see it, but it's a little more tangible way for them to begin to understand just how small that atom is. The next thing we're going to talk about is physical changes and chemical changes. And we're going to start a lesson today, uh, start an experiment today that will carry over into lesson two as they work on those changes. The instructions for this are in their student workbook 
and you are going to have them read through the instructions and then work on this together. Discuss the instructions as a group after they've had a chance to read them. But they will need to take two lids and they will need to write water on one of the lids on the bottom, the part that won't get wet, and they'll need to write vinegar on the other and put their initials just so that they can keep track. Um, if you use numbers in your classroom, they can put their numbers, just something so they will be able to tell which are their two lids for the next part of the lesson. Okay, It does tell them to then take about one teaspoon, or taster spoon, excuse me, of the baking soda into both lids. And then they'll need to use the pipette to put several drops of water over one and they can mix that up. You want to get the baking soda dissolved in this. So you can use the toothpick to continue to stir it around so it dissolves. And then take vinegar for the other. Again, lots of oohs and ahs as this goes. Remind them they're using the pipette so they can do this slowly and it doesn't cause a huge reaction and mess all over their desk. And then again, use the toothpick to mix that up. And this is going to be really important with both of these that that's mixed up as much as possible. We want to make sure that the vinegar has reacted with all of the baking soda um, and that no amount of stirring is going to cause more reaction to occur. We want to make sure that that reaction has completely happened. So if they can add some vinegar and it's still reacting, they'll need to slowly continue to add a little bit more until that completes. Now you're going to talk with students about how they just saw a physical and a chemical reaction. In the physical, in the physical change, the baking soda dissolved into the water and that changed for now the form. You've got the dissolved baking soda in the water so now it's having the properties of the liquid rather than the properties of the solid it had before that. With the vinegar, we saw a chemical change, and that was seen in that reaction with all of the bubbling. So you'll want to spend a few minutes talking about that, and then have students make sure that they record all of their observations in their workbook. Again, this will be used again in the next lesson, so you'll want to make sure that these are stored somewhere where they won't be disturbed. You do need to make sure that they've had enough time to completely evaporate, so if you're in a very humid climate and this doesn't happen overnight, you may want to make sure that you've spaced your lessons out enough um, because these will need to have completely evaporated before you take the next lesson.